Edition Bulletin. The Bishop even rang me up last night and said, Gee, thanks, Ron. You know, it's our first colour edition. But it is just a, a small way of us uh, acknowledging, Bishop, your role here as not only Bishop, but pastor of the community. Um, and we've got a few things happening now. So you better get comfortable. <laughs> I call on um, Peter Mowbray, who has been on our pastoral council for many years, has helped us in our reorganising of the parishes here, to say a few words on behalf of our Lumen Christi parishes. Thank you, Peter. Emeritus Bishop Elect Peter. <laughs> Father Ron, Father Ken, and Father Anthony, and fellow parishioners and visitors from our, around our diocese. Thank you for the honour of speaking on behalf of the parishioners of the Lumen Christi Pastoral Region. There have been four regional farewells and several involving the, the schools of the diocese. However, today we are in a privileged situation. So I want to focus on your role as our parish priest using my observations of your 16 years as my parish priest. I was in the in, in, instrumental and involved in the introduction of these name tags for our parishioners. This wasn't for your benefit, Bishop Peter. My motives were selfish. I am hopeless at remembering names. You astound us all with your ability to remember our names especially since you apply this skill throughout the diocese. I'm even amazed how you correctly link all your priests to their correct parish at the Chrism Masses. This familiarity has come from your active involvement in all aspects of our pastoral region, not just the administrative aspects, but in being our pastor. After Mass, you are often the last to leave the church car park staying to speak to as many parishioners as possible. We all appreciate this welcome and friendly gesture of your, of your ministry. Some have experienced, but many have observed, as lately as last Sunday's Masses, your gentle and caring concern for our well-being, both physical and spiritual. My wife, Carmel, was amazed and greatly uplifted when you visited her in our home to pray with her a few days before she died. I possibly needed more than five minutes notice to rid the house of the oily smell of cooking fish. <laughs> Father Ron asked me to point out to you that you didn't wear out three parish administrators during your time as our parish priest, but that it took you three goes to find the perfect one. <laughs> However, we know that it's through your close collaboration with Father Sean, Father Graham, and for the past 12 years with Father Ron, that you have balanced your parish administration with your extraordinary workload in the diocese. How many cars have you worn out? And how many kilometres have you driven to attend confirmations and all manner of functions from Milton to Macquarie Fields and beyond? We know that judging, juggling parish and diocesan duties has been quite complex. We've seen you manage many challenges during your time with us, some not of your making, especially the response to child sexual abuse. Your caring focus has been on the well-being of people impacted while implementing proper protocols to avoid future problems. On the more enjoyable side, we've appreciated your support and leadership in bringing us all together as members of the Lumen Christi Pastoral Region. The cooperation and sense of belonging to one team while celebrating our separate histories has worked well. As a past member of the Pastoral Council, I witnessed your active contributions to our discussions. Of course, if we laboured a point too long, your busy day is sometimes prompted prayerful examination of your eyelids. <laughs> We'll all miss your well-constructed and eloquent sermons. 
Occasionally, I've seen your sermon notes, and there's some of them here. Some of you may not be aware they're witnessing a masterful navigation of a maze of revisions and illegible annotations. <laughs> That's a testament to your attention to detail, but it's a marvel you can deliver them so smoothly. I come to one of your more enduring and endearing characteristics, your endless supply of awful dad jokes. <laughs> I know you've driven fathers Ron and Bernie nuts as you rehearsed them, and that many of us, including me, are complicit by emailing them to you. But we do appreciate them. We're amazed how you remember them and can trot them out the right one to suit any occasion. I recall only a few. For example, the story about the four grave diggers walking aimlessly around the cemetery with a coffin. Obviously, they'd lost the plot. <laughs> After watching you bear the stress of your role as our parish priest and bishop with such good grace, we've seen you visibly brighten with the relief with relief since the announcement of your emancipation. Next Thursday, as you pass the yoke of responsibility for us to Bishop-elect Brian, please tell him to assemble his own supply of dad jokes. <laughs> Be assured, we are all profoundly grateful for your 16 years as our parish priest and dear friend, and that you will remain an integral part of the Lumen Christi community. We all look forward to enjoying your company in the future. On behalf of us all, thank you. Peter Mowbray has been part of the Lumen Christi Parish and worships here at the Cathedral Parish. And now I call forward John Moe from the uh, St John Vianney Martin Dolorosa Parish to come forward. And Peter Cooney from the St Bridget's Parish to come forward. And on behalf of four beautiful communities to present to Bishop Peter what we've been doing in secret that you don't know about, I hope, uh, that we give with great love and affection. Thank you, Father Ron, Bishop Peter, Father Ken, Sarah uh, Fiamanti Wells, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> It's my great honour, privilege, to be here with you today and to make this small presentation to Bishop Peter on his retirement. Peter Mowbray said most of the things that I was going to say, <laughs> so I'll have words with him later. Um, but can I say a couple of things? Firstly, Bishop Peter, your leadership to us in the 16 years of being with us has been absolutely amazing. There's been difficult times within the church, and within our community. And all the time you have remained steadfast in, the, in your role as a leader, both as a, in our part, your pastoral role and your spiritual role. I think we are stronger for that leadership and we can go forward and you can be confident that we can now exercise a greater strength in our faith as a result of the leadership. Secondly, Bishop Peter, as you've moved around your community, you have been very open and the humanity, the human side of your role has been quite amazing. As a result of that, I think I can call you my friend. And I think we can all call him our friend. In concluding, I was pleased to hear when you mentioned your role as Bishop Emeritus, I thought, Hmm, he might have some spare time. Maybe we can get some game to golfing. <laughs> Thank you.
I echo, sorry, I echo Peter and John's comments uh, about Bishop Peter, but I think we should now focus on the next stage of his life. Um, Bishop Peter, I know you've been in your role for 16 years, but now I'd like to actually create a, a new perception with regard to your retirement. Retirement isn't just retirement, it's actually going to a new job. <laughs> and in this new job, people need a, a job description. Now he's already outlined uh, a few items that will be in his job description. But I, when I look around uh, the congregation today, I'm sure there's a lot of people with experience on what retirement means. So, Bishop Peter, have fun working out what your job description is. It will also have performance issues with it in that you will have to improve on what you, on what you decide is in your job description. I wish you would. Thank you. Bishop Peter has the little kid in him. Can't wait to open him. <laughs> but it's really a symbolic um, memorial, Bishop, of what you have achieved um, here at Lumen Christi. And we hope that as you gaze upon it, that you will pray for us as still your spiritual role in the uh, in our diocese and in our parishes. We keep one and you keep one. <laughs> This is the Lumen Christi Pastoral Region, incorporating St. Francis Xavier Cathedral Parish, Wollongong, St. John Vianney Co-Cathedral Parish, Berry Meadow, Marta Dolorosa Church, Balgownie, St. Bridget's Parish, Gwynville, appreciates the wonderful leadership of 16 years of Bishop Peter W. Ingham as parish priest and bishop July 2001 to February 2018. We are a Catholic community of welcome and hospitality. We are nourished by the Eucharist and enlivened by the Holy Spirit. We live to bring to fulfilment the mission of God's Church to be a light of Christ in our local area and beyond. From all of us at Lumen Christi. This is our mission statement, Bishop Peter, and in the early days of our pastoral region, we looked kind of to the lighthouse as a symbol, and it was from that symbol of the lighthouse that we came up with the light of Christ, Lumen Christi. That lighthouse is one of those landmarks in the local area that all Wollongong people know. As Lumen Christi developed, I think the lighthouse was surpassed by the light of yourself, Bishop Peter. As a humble man that you are, you would find that difficult to absorb. But you have been a lighthouse for many of us in many different ways. And at each of these farewells, I have asked people to focus on their particular memory of you. And for the 500 or so people gathered here this morning, there would be thousands, thousands of memories and I hope that we were able to capture those memories in some of those bulletin shots that um, is in our bulletin this week. I will miss you, Bishop Peter, even being the guinea pig for jokes. 
I will think, what's missing? And it's those jokes. But I will miss you. You have entrusted me at a time in my life when I didn't know anything, and I still don't know much, but you entrusted me with that, and Peter Mowbray got it right. After the third appointment, you got the right one. <laughs> I'm pleased, very pleased, to have grown under you as mentor, as a dad figure, isn't that a nice idea? <laughs> Sons and dads have their disagreements. We've had those, and we've called it truce. But more importantly, as the years grew on, we've learned to respect each other with a, the profoundness that St. Paul calls for respect. Bishop Peter, I think I simply echo what everybody who is here feels. A sense of awe at the way you have been just P. W. Ingham, number one, and Bishop number two that being a good human being first is what God calls us to be. And the roles are built on that. We couldn't have asked for a better human being to be the best possible vision. And I'd like you all to stand and we're going to do a freeze again. <laughs> For he's a jolly fellow, he's a jolly fellow, he's a jolly fellow. And so say all of us, and so say all of us, and so say all of us. For he's a jolly Thank you very much for those lovely affirming words. I must say, over these couple of weeks and going around the diocese and these various farewells, uh, I've been very affirmed. And uh, I look back and I say, well, what did I do that was unusual? I just think I, I was there, being there is probably part of it. But um, I see myself as an ordinary person like all of us. We're all human beings, as Ron just said, we're human beings first. And, it's that's, um, that's where we connect with one another and that's where we reach out to each other and try and support and, and help and encourage. I, I, when I became a bishop, there was a text of scripture that jumped out of, the, out of the Bible at me one day in the reading of Mass, and it was Paul and Barnabas uh, making their missionary journey. And it said in the New Testament in the Jerusalem Bible version that Paul and Barnabas put fresh heart into the disciples encouraging them to persevere in the faith. And I thought that's really a summary of what a bishop's job, a priest's job, all of us, we're all the same. Uh, you know, to put fresh heart into people, into each other, and to encourage each other to persevere in the faith that we have, the faith in the Lord Jesus, uh, because that's really the foundation of our whole way of living. And by connecting ourselves with the Lord, uh, it gives a perspective on the way we, we try to live and the way we try to reach out to, to each other. But, um, you know, uh, putting fresh heart into people and encourage, encouraging each other to, to persevere and, and to, to live the faith that we, that we love. 
So I, I really want to thank Ron and, and thank John and Peter and Peter Mowbray is over there too. Yeah. Thank you, and Peter and, and, the, and all of you for being here today. I'm, I'm just blown away as I've been over these last few weeks. So I, I just hope and pray that um, life's going to be different. Uh, but uh, as I said, I still belong to this diocese, and uh, no doubt I'll be doing locums and things and jobs uh, while I'm in my retirement and for as long as I can. But I just want to just thank you for the inspiration and the uh, example you give to me. Uh, it's a two-way process, but this place is home, and it has been home for me for the last 16 years. This lovely cathedral church, small as it is, but yet intimate and, and beautifully apportioned and beautifully looked after. And I remember the time we had everything stripped off the walls and we had to get the rising damp out and so on. Uh, but it's a beautiful building and uh, the lovely images that we have uh, that remind us that this is God's house and this is where we, the church, gather to worship and to hear the word of God and to be nourished on the sacrament. So I'm just very grateful and just so that you won't be disappointed. I thought today as we read those readings about Noah, uh, there were, one question was, you know, where did Noah keep the woodpeckers on the ark? <laughs> and the other one was uh, the child who thought Joan of Arc was a French descendant of Noah. <laughs> But as you say, it comes out through reminders that you see here and there. But look, thank you very much, and I hope you'll come and have some refreshments afterwards and chance to meet you all. And congratulations too to our elect who were um, commissioned today at, at this formal ceremony, and uh, we'll have some photographs with them too and sign their books. But God bless you, and thank you very much. I'm very touched and, and uh, inspired by your kindness and your goodness. Thank you.